Good evening and welcome to Mill Valley High School for tonight's Ivy High School Game of the Week. Two Sunflower Conference heavyweights as Gardner Edgerton 3-0 on the road to take on 3-0 Mill Valley. Hi everybody, Kevin Wyke along with Mark Borichter, our sideline reporter will be Bethany Bowman. This is the Hivey High School Game of the Week here on Spectrum News. Well, we got a special night, homecoming night for Mill Valley, special uniforms and two special teams, Mark. Well, two special teams, Gardner Edgerton, state runner up last year in 6A, double overtime loss, has only given up seven points coming into this game defensively. Another solid team for Gardner Edgerton. And then when you look at Mill Valley, homecoming night, special night tonight, not, not much else needs to be said. Four-time defending state champions. They haven't played as well as they want to, but this is going to be a good battle here tonight. Time now for the high V player profile. Braven Powell running the flex bone for GE. Well, Braven Powell is not your typical flex bone style of quarterback. He's a little bit taller. He's got a better arm than most quarterbacks do. But where he's done his damage so far this year has been on the ground, averaging 11.2 yards per carry and seven touchdowns, Kevin, through the first three weeks. Mill Valley's defense led by Jaden Woods, the D1 prospect. Well, you mentioned he's a D1 prospect. He's got over 30 plus offers. And those are from some SEC schools and Big Ten schools. Two sacks coming in on the year for this junior. It's going to be a little bit different style of game for him tonight, though, assignment-wise against this flex bump. Mill Valley playing host to Gardner Edgerton. It's the High V High School Game of the Week. And we're back with the opening kickoff right after this. High V proud to support Kansas City High School Athletics. Cloudy, 73 degrees as we check in with our sideline reporter. Here's Bethany Bowman. Thanks, guys. A really good game on tap tonight. Mill Valley, of course, the four-time 5A defending state champions. Coach uh, Appleby tells me that this team looks a little different this season in the fact that they're replacing seniors with seniors. Typically, you know, for the Jaguars, two or three-year starters here, once they become a senior this year, not really the case. But Coach Appleby says that those older players bring a nice knowledge of the game to the program. For Gardner Edgerton, they surprised some people last year in 6A, finishing 6A state runner up. For head coach Jesse Owen, you know, he said that his team has a lot of confidence now after that run. What's even more impressive is that team did that with zero first team all league Sunflower selections last season. So a total team effort for the Trailblazers. And like I said, now they are really feeling like they belong here in a, in a big matchup like this. Back to you guys. Mill Valley won the coin toss, deferred their option to the second half, so they'll kick off to Gardner Edgerton, coached by Jesse Owen, the former Olathe North Star. 16 and 10 in his third year coaching the team. Former Olathe East coach. And Mill Valley, of course, coached by, as the sideline reporter uh, mentioned, Joel Appleby. 14th year, 118 and 36, won six state titles and four in a row. Trying to go uh, historic in 5A, become the first team to go five straight state titles in 5A. Braven Powell, Mark is the quarterback, 6'4, 195, a junior, throws the ball, very athletic kid, completes 61% of his passes, 11.2 yards per carry. As though go up the middle with their fullback. That is Sire Padilla, one of their super sophomores, as he is a shutdown on the play by Seifert, the linebacker, and second leading tackler on the team for this Mill Valley team. Yeah, one of the things you're gonna see a little different if you watch Gardner Edgerton a lot last year is that fullback position was manned by Dawson Kindler. He's playing a lot more defense this year as opposed to that fullback position. Yeah, he is the will linebacker is Kindler, but he'll get some touches. And now this play is bottled up. Defensive line doing their job. And that was Jaden Woods. They say he's the strongest guy pound for pound. He showed it on that play. Well, he was dominant last year as a sophomore for Mill Valley. And you're going to look inside Abe Schaefer in there to start things off, having to just make a pile. And then Jaden Woods making the tackle. First drive of the game, third down and six. Powell will take off, and Powell runs for a first down, and, and you're averaging 11.2 yards per carry. Uh, this guy averaging 83 yards per game on the ground and a nice run on third down. Well, with this offense, yes, you start, everything starts with that fullback right there. First two plays, now you see him pull it, and you can't let him get out into the open field, Kevin, as you mentioned how fast he is. Excellent in the classroom. 
High GPA student, also plays basketball in the winter. His first pass is complete in the flat. And out to the 45-yard line goes Colton Hawkinson, their top receiver, a senior wide out at 6'4". Well, a lot of cushion on the outside for Hawkinson, and Mill Valley's going to play a little bit that way because they have to read and react to this offense right in the running game. But an easy pitch and catch. And the first pass from Powell. 13 yards, first down. As here's the fullback. That is Padilla across midfield and a nice gain on a first down run. Now, Mark, explain. You got two wings. You got a left wing and a right wing, and then you got a fullback, and the quarterback runs in this offense well, as well. Well, everything runs through the fullback in this offense, but you're going to see a lot of little variations off of it. One thing that Gardner Edgerton does a little bit more than other teams is throw the football out of this. And they on cue, throw it and complete it. And down the sidelines, Randy Singleton to the house. Touchdown, Gardner Edgerton. What a run as it goes for 48 yards. And he's going to get a lot of yards after the catch on this one as this was just a little curl route, it looked like to me. And he was able to get to the sideline, use the speed, and score his fourth touchdown of the year. Good start for the visitors of Gardner Edgerton. Well, a great start. And one of the things that you'll see Gardner Edgerton do a little bit more than other teams in this offense, a little more up-tempo, right, in and out of the huddle. Extra point up and through by Ashton Adrian. But a quick strike on a pass by the Trailblazers gets our first score. Again, just, just a lot of cushion on the outside, and Singleton just uses his speed on the simple hitch route, high percentage throw. And once he gets outside right here, nobody's going to catch him with that type of speed. Turns it into a 43-yard touchdown, Kevin, and it's 7-0. Well, Jesse Owen felt like uh, keys tonight would be turnovers, penalties. And we just can't make mistakes because Mill Valley will pounce on mistakes and really make you pay. Brian McCall, the defensive coordinator with the hair. Former Olathe North quarterback, led his team to a state championship. Jesse Owen and he are friends, former Eagles, but oddly enough, Gene Weir on the Mill Valley sideline, the, the legendary uh, Olathe North coach as an assistant coach and offensive line coach for Joel Appleby. Kick away, and on one hop, it is fielded. And a nice return out to the 26. There's a flag down on the play. That was Desmond Williams, the junior wide receiver, with the return. Phil Lombardi is your referee tonight. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Mill Valley. So that uh, is not the way Coach Appleby wants to start backed up inside his own 20. This is a two-quarterback system. We'll see Daniel Blaine first, then we'll see Connor Bohan. Both are uh, seniors. This offense led by their running back, Tristan Baker. And he'll get the first touch of the game. Runs into Dawson Kindler. We mentioned that Kindler's moved from fullback to now uh, a, a will linebacker position and uh, makes the first tackle of the game for the uh, Trailblazer defense. Well, this Trailblazer defense we talked about in the open, Kevin, has only given up seven points through the first three weeks of the season here so far. And this Mill Valley offense, they want to be multiple. They want to be about 50-50 in the run game and pass game. It's Baker again to the outside, trying to cut it back. Besides, there's nothing there, so he just works it to the outside before he's pushed out of bounds. Thomas Saviston, the Mike linebacker, and their leading tackler escorted him to the chalk as it's going to be third down at about three. We're just going to see Davion Harris, number 10, leading the way around. 
Lined up kind of in a wing position right there. And Baker did a nice job of keeping his feet moving to make this third and short. Kendler also there involved in the stop. Third down and four officially. Pass caught and a first down and more. Tackle is broken. And a nice run after the catch by Preston Fisher, the 6'2 senior tied in. First down, Mill Valley. Well, this was a well-executed play. Little mesh route, two crossing routes, both tight ends on the cross. Fisher gets open, breaks this first tackle, as you mentioned, Kevin. That's a big first down for Mill Valley after being backed up to start this drive. Preston Fisher. Fighting a hamstring injury earlier this week. But he's good to go tonight. As here's Baker running to the sideline, going to the wide side of the field. This is a kid that rushed for 1,400 yards and 20 touchdowns last year. Caught a couple of touchdown passes receiving. But he's off to a 4.7 yards per carry start, one 100-yard game. Gain four on that, second down and six now facing this Mill Valley offense, averaging 40 points per game, 330 yards per game. But Mark mentioned the gardner Edgerton defense, two shutouts, seven takeaways, and only giving up two points per game. But strength of schedule has to be checked there. As here's Baker, and nothing doing. As coming up and making the stop, was Cameron Porter from the secondary. You're gonna see this a lot, this mesh between the quarterback and the running back. A couple of different options there, right? Quarterback can keep it, come up inside. This time he hands it off to Baker. And as you mentioned, Cameron Porter coming up from his corner position to make that tackle. You've got Eli and Cameron, they are twins. They're both cornerbacks for this team. Now third down and six. Blaine turning, throwing, Davion Harris the catch, and he got drilled right in his lower back by the aforementioned Cameron Porter. It's gonna be fourth down. I think they, no gain officially as Harris took a hard shot in the back. Yeah, well Blaine had to get this ball out in a hurry. There was penetration inside. So he couldn't really let his receiver get, clear the coverage there and get a little bit further to the outside and let the other routes develop, had to get rid of it. Brings up this fourth down. Well, let's see what they do here. The quarterback remains on the field. Lane will probably pooch a punt now as he goes back in punt formation. And sends it off the side of his foot, and it's going to be a very short punt. And good field position now for Gardner Edgerton. So they struck with a 43-yard touchdown pass to Singleton on their first drive. And they'll take over at their own 43-yard line. Only a 10-yard punt. And good field position now for the Gardner-Edgerton Trailblazer offense. This team averaging 47.3 points per game, 427 yards per game. As this time... The running back going to nowhere, Hayden Heller. There was a lot of talk about this sophomore being the most improved player. Truman Griffith, their star defensive end, out with an injury for the rest of the year. Heller had to step up, and uh, number 94 make a big play there. The sophomore, they list him as the most improved player on their defensive line. That's one thing about this Mill Valley defense has always been strong up front and then in their linebacking core. No gain, second down and 10. Powell, the pitch. And this is one of their wings getting his first touch. And this is a veteran guy, Dylan Butash. And uh, he's getting about 19.8 yards per carry. This is really textbook right here. You're going to see the fullback get taken, the quarterback get taken, and then the corner coming up on the outside. That was That's uh, yet on the outside yeah. coming in and making. That's textbook defense against this this style of offense. Each man is accounted for. They're down at six. Power run with Padilla. Looks to be about a half yard short. And it's going to be fourth down, less than a yard facing GE. Able to break a tackle there. Got wrestled down by Cronin, the free safety, but 
Very close. Fourth down and one now. Trail Blazers second drive of the game leading seven to nothing on a singleton touchdown catch from Braven Powell. They go, and the quarterback keeping it on the read and gets the first down. Braven Powell, the fans reacted to the stuff of the fullback, but Powell, the quarterback, number six, kept it, ran around the end, not for much, but enough for a first down for the Trailblazers. Yeah, you mentioned the fans here thought this ball was down inside. Powell pulls that, able to just pick up enough for the first down and move the chains for Gardner Edgerton. It's usually me getting faked out. The fans got faked out. Play action on first down. Go deep middle. And there he is again. Singleton with the speed. Turning up the field. Singleton into the end zone. Touchdown. Gardner Edgerton. Randy Singleton. Second of the night. 46 on this one. And the passing game coming up big early on for Gardner Edgerton on the road. Well, I'll tell you what, Kevin. This was a great throw and catch because Singleton was on a seam route and Mill Valley was over top of it. Extra point try by Adrian through the uprights and a two touchdown lead for the visitors as Randy Singleton coming up big, their leading receiver, his fifth touchdown of the year. We're gonna take a couple looks at this, but he's on a seam route and Braven Powell just kind of throws him down to a spot where he has to settle because it was really good coverage over the top, but he settles down right here, and then it's just all speed, Kevin. We saw this on the first touchdown catch. We're seeing it again, the explosiveness once the football's in his hands to take it to pay dirt. He came in averaging 27 yards per catch. That's a big number, but it's going up after tonight. Those two 40-plus touchdown catches. Let's send it down to Bethany. Thanks, guys. Yeah, talking to head coach Jesse O, and I, I think I told you last week, I always like to ask these coaches during the week, who is the X factor for your team, either on offense or defense? For Coach Owen, it was Randy Singleton, without a doubt, uh, no hesitation for him. Of course, him a two-way player on both sides of the ball. Coach Owen says he can just you know, hurt you in so many different ways on offense. You know, he's a big player on defense for this team. He has really break out, breaking out this season for the Trailblazers. Yeah, he also plays free safety. Yes, here's Williams from the goal line with the muff. And it'll be a touchback as the ball goes back into the end zone. So first and 10 from the 20-yard uh, line. And Mill Valley will have their second possession of the game, but already down two touchdowns. But Mark, we did this game last year. It was 14-0 uh, in favor of Gardner Edgerton. And then by halftime, Mill Valley was already up 28 to 14 at yeah. halftime. So We've seen this offense be able to strike quickly, but this is a little bit different team. They don't really have a veteran quarterback like Hayden Jay like they had last year. Well, Bethany talked earlier at the start of this game about the differences this year with this team, right? Because they're replacing seniors with seniors on Mill Valley. And in past years, they've had a lot of juniors coming up in that spot. So when they get to the be a senior, they've had a couple years of experience. Where they're inexperienced at is that quarterback right now. Blaine getting his second series, in trouble. And he's gonna lose yardage back near the 16 yard line. A Lot of penetration. The guy flying in was Max Nichols, number 81. He disrupted this play and his teammates able to make the stop. But well, also back there was number 13, Mark Debiak, the Sam linebacker, but a lot of penetration by the the Blazers on that one. A lot of penetration, and Dibiak did a nice job of playing the run, the running back right there, and the quarterback in that situation, not allowing Blaine to go anywhere. Dibiak's father, Jeff, was a Buck Buchanan Award winner when he played at Olathe North, good friend of Jesse Owen. There you see the connection and why he's playing for the Trailblazers as this running play to Baker, getting some of that yardage back. Baker. Once again, 4.7 yards per carry this year. Second team all league last year. Also runs track here at Mill Valley. But you're behind the sticks, third down and 11. And 
Hastings. Mill Valley offense wins over Olathe Northwest, Shawnee Mission Northwest. That was last week, and then their week two win was Shawnee Mission West. But the Northwest game was closer than most people expected. 14 to seven was the win as Mill Valley facing third down and long. Blaine throwing, completing, and they'll have a, a first down. That is Andy Watts with the catch and the first down as he'll get 12 yards on the reception. Andy Watts, the junior wideout, moving the chains. That's a nice job by Blaine sitting in the pocket right here. Little levels route to the outside. Watts breaks it out on that out right at the, right at the sticks, picking up the first down for Mill Valley. Spotted at the 31, first and 10. Jags on their homecoming night. Jags undercover, wearing those special all-black uniforms, black face masks. Midnight blue is actually their predominant color on their jersey as this one is tripped up. Nice play by Eli Porter, the other uh, Porter twin as Blaine went flying. He'll get a yard on the play, second down and nine. Blaine is a competitive kid, not quite as athletic as the guy you'll see coming in, Connor Bohan. Bohan's taller and lankier. But Blaine uh, can run the football, 13.7 on his yards per carry. Only one 100-yard rushing day on the season as he'll throw going deep down the field. Too long this time as they were going for the deep ball that time with uh, Grayson Scott. So they uh, went with the uh, nine route that time and came up empty. And now again, uh, behind the sticks, third down and nine. We saw third down and 11 converted. So just a situation there too, Kevin, where <clears throat> Blaine just didn't have quite, you need a split second longer to be able to step into that football a little bit more and allow Scott to, to run past his defender. As it was, he just overthrew it. The line to gain is the 41, pass to the sideline. Gonna be intercepted, flag is down. This is Cameron Porter, his second interception of the year. And the Jags will tackle him, but once again, a flag in the secondary this is gonna be near pass. midfield. This is gonna be pass interference. He was trying to get this ball to Watts on a little post corner route. There was a collision. And the gardner Edgerton defender, I believe it was one of the safeties, got his hands all over him and, and essentially tackled him. Pass interference, defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot results in a first down. So you're going to see Watts in the slot. He's actually going to run a little post corner out, breaks to the post. You don't see the full contact there, but he had he was going to beat the defender, and he just pulled him down. It was a good call by the official in that situation. So the penalty gives Mill Valley a first down. Ball at the... 47 and their own second drive of the game and to punt on their first drive and they're already down by two touchdowns late in the first quarter fake the Jets sweep and the quarterback trying to run it showing some good strength is Blaine as he's able to get it just across or that's a Baker on the run I beg your pardon for a short gain It's the first time we've seen faking the jet sweep out of Mill Valley. I mentioned there'll be multiple. You'll see different formations, different looks from them. Over the course of this game, but that pass interference having a huge break for Mill Valley too in that situation because of being able to pick up the first down via penalty. A run of four yards by Baker on first down. Second down and six, under a minute to play in your first quarter. And this is Blaine running the football effectively, and he runs for a first down inside the 40-yard line. You mentioned, you mentioned the threat that he is with his legs, and you're going to see it right here. This is what happens when you give the football a lot. This is a design quarterback run. See the tight end pulling around, making a block on the kick out there, allowing Blaine to get up for the first down. 12-yard run, first down for Daniel Blaine. 5'10", 170-pound senior. Baker can't cut it up there as he is uh, taken down by Spencer Easley. Second team all league 
definitely a college prospect. The defensive end for the Trailblazers. End of one, 14-0 visitors. Gardner Edgerton on top here on Mill Valley's homecoming on the hy High School Game of the Week. Ready for the start of the second quarter on Spectrum News, our hy High School Game of the Week. Daniel Blaine running the offense. Second down and 10 from the 39. Forced out of the pocket, using his speed to get to the edge. And takes a hard hit near the 25. Lane will have to shake it off. There is a flag down on the sideline. Might have a late hit coming up here for Gardner Edgerton. Yeah, this was pretty close on the sideline, but Mill Valley coming out running a double move to the top side. Nowhere to go with it. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the defense. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First down, Mill Valley. So 14 yards on the run plus the penalty yardage, and Mill Valley in the uh, red zone. Get to the top. They're running a double move here, but pressure inside. Nowhere to go. Does a nice job of scrambling. You're going to see it right here at the end. Man. it's that's. I think it's more so. It wasn't so much it was late. It was up near the head and neck area. On that day, which is why the unnecessary roughness call. Once again, a big point of emphasis this year with both sides of the state line and the officiating crews is player safety. As they go on a jet sweep, here's Andy Watts, and he can't get to the edge. Nice play, Cameron Porter. Great speed sealing off that play. A couple of yards gain, but looked like he was going to get a lot more when it started. When they handed this ball off to Watts, it looked like he had a path to the end zone. And Cam Porter, you're going to see him come up force outside the two blocks. Does a nice job of getting outside, not allowing himself to get blocked and cutting that off. That's a great defensive play by Cam Porter. Yeah, Baker was trying to block him. He got to the edge. Second down. And Blaine keeping it off the left side. Good push. Of course, you got Gus Hawkins who's headed to K-State on that left side. But... He's, uh, he and Kemp, the tackles, are the most veteran guys on this offensive line. The inside guys, Penner, Fulcher, and Sunderman, uh, really improved players. But Kemp and Hawkins, the big studs, there's number 78. He's a K-State commit. Third down, and we're seeing a three on the scoreboard. Looks like more like uh, a long three, maybe four yards from our side angle view. And that looked like... Defensive end for Gardner Edgerton jumped off sides. Fans responding to that, but the officials did not throw the flag. Here's the third down play. Blaine making some nice moves and then ridden down by Spencer Easley from behind. It'll be fourth down. And Spencer Easley with a hard hit on the Mill Valley quarterback who was already hit earlier on the sideline hard, but watch number 27 driving the quarterback down. Yeah, Blaine just had nowhere to go with this ball. <laughs> Got out of the pocket early. Feel that hit all the way up here. It was, a, it was a big hit, as you mentioned. Be a 27-yard attempt for Kenton Lofman, the senior, well within his range. He's a college prospect kicker. Blaine will hold it, and he drills it. It's his first field goal of the year. Kenton Lofman, number 99, senior kicker for Mill Valley. And the Jags on the board here, early second quarter. Well, a good drive right there by Mill Valley. They got aided by a pass interference call right at the end of the first quarter. Able to use the legs of Blaine to pick up a first down and tack on the unnecessary roughness penalty. Obviously, you'd like to punch it in right there for seven. But to get points out of that, that's what Mill Valley needed to do right here. As you mentioned a year ago in this game, they were down 14 nothing and came back and it was 20. 28-14 at, at halftime, so I have a feeling though, Kevin, with the way Gardner Edgerton's defense is playing and where their offense is playing right now, you got to get more than field goals, but you got to get points here early. Yeah, these teams haven't played that much, but since they've been in the same conference together since 2020, the record is 2-1 and one favoring Mill Valley. This will be the fourth meeting. Last win for Gardner Edgerton at Mill Valley in 2020, 28 to 19.
Hoffman has it on the tee. Van Lerberg is the deep man for the Gardner Edgerton special teams. 3 0 wins over Shawnee Mission East, Shawnee Mission South, and Olathe West. And they kick away from Van Lerberg, and it'll go into the end zone for a touchback. So, as far as strength of schedule, Gardner Edgerton hasn't played the strongest of schedules. They had uh, two shutouts and only gave up seven points, as Mark mentioned. But Coming up next week, they will play host to Olathe North. We'll have that broadcast for you on Spectrum News. There's the passing numbers. A couple of long touchdown passes to Randy Singleton of 43 and 46 yards, the difference in the ball game. As the flex bone sets up first and 10 from the 20, quick drop, throwing it to Hawkinson. And Hawkinson got about eight or nine, and Hawkinson is... Their top receiver returning. Singleton has been the big play guy, but Hawkinson had nine for 322 and nine touchdowns last year as an X receiver. He got seven officially, second down and three. So we've seen the flex bone of St. Thomas Aquinas mark. They don't throw it as much as this uh, Gardner Edgerton team does. And this running play. Well, I'll also tell you why they don't have Braven Powell playing quarterback. Yeah, well, there. Braven Powell, Not yeah. that there's anything wrong with, with what Aquinas does. This is just a different style of offense from the flex bone in terms of the weapons on the outside, right? And Coach Jesse Owen and this Trailblazer staff are doing a nice job of getting the ball in the hands of the playmakers. We've seen a couple of explosive plays here in the first half. Padilla able to get the first down. Tackled by Seifert, but not after he got the line to gain. This will be, uh, once again, Padilla. Padilla is very fast, 4.6 speed, so he's one of the fastest guys on the team. And this Gardner-Edgerton team, you know, a chip on their shoulder, coming so close against Manhattan. They were in double overtime. They tried to go for a two-point conversion. They were stopped and lost 21-20. Still a lot of good powers in 6A. Olathe North, Blue Valley Northwest, Wichita Northwest. Coach Steve Martin's team down in the Wichita area. Here's Butash to the edge. Butash with running room. And he's across midfield for a first down run. Dylan Butash thought he was horse collared down. The officials don't agree. But it is a first down run for Gardner Edgerton. You're going to see nobody's on the pitch guy right here. A nice block on the outside. I think he's right there. There was uh, He was grabbed on the back there by uh, Cronin, the free safety. Yep, there it is right there. He signaled to the official right there that, hey, I was tackled uh, illegally, but they didn't uh, call it as this running play to the fullback. Fullback gets probably the most touches in this offense, but you got those wing guys, and uh, this is a new fullback in the game, and this is uh, Nehemiah Snipe. Another uh, young guy that uh, they like his speed on the team. He's a sophomore as well. Nemo, as they call him. Second down and eight. And this time the fullback's going to have to eat it as there's Heller, the super sophomore from Mill Valley. He does a nice job of just eating this up inside. Gets the penetration. I don't think Braven Powell even had a chance to pull this ball, even if he wanted to, how fast Heller was on that. Yeah, that was finding Nemo. Nemo snipe, no shot at all, as Heller, the guy filling in for Truman Griffith out with that leg injury on his left leg. Now third down and nine. Most coaches will tell you, you want to get the flex bone backed up behind the sticks. And now whistles prior to the snap. A well, timeout by Gardner Edgerton here. Gardner Edgerton, their first time out of the first half. Here's one thing I've noticed, though, Kevin, too, about this offense, and I mentioned it earlier, but Gardner Edgerton runs at a little different pace with this offense. They are much more up tempo, getting plays in and out of the huddle and getting back to the line of scrimmage. Which, when you've got the weapons that they do on the outside, when you look at Hawkinson and Singleton. You're seeing right now Mill Valley scramble a little bit to get lined up. 
which when you have to play super disciplined football defensively, understanding who's got the fullback, who's got the quarterback, who's got the pitch guy, just that little bit of movement or indecision certainly helps you from an offensive standpoint. Dustin Delaney in the middle of that huddle, he's the man behind the flex bone, the former Shawnee Mission East coach who won a state title in 2014. Coming up next week on the High V Game of the Week here on Spectrum News, we got Gardner Edgerton again. If you like Gardner Edgerton, they'll play host to Olathe North. That should be a great matchup there at Gardner Edgerton. Third down and long. Third down and nine from the 47 yard line. Toss sweep. Padilla to the edge. Good blocking on the edge. Padilla down the sideline. Sire. Gonna go in for the touchdown. So it'll be 47 yards. Great blocking on the edge. And Padilla with his second rushing touchdown of the year. There is a flag down behind the play. So hold the phone if you're Gardner Edgerton. Officials getting together to talk about this. I'm not sure where the flag is. It's definitely down the field. Coach Owen is voicing his complaint, and the officials are giving him the Heisman Trophy signal there. Well, he's not afraid to voice his, yep. his displeasure. Because I think he's going to lose six points here. There is no foul oh, on the play. Wow. The result of the play is a touchdown. So the lobbying may have paid off, maybe not. But the officials got together, picked up the flag, 47-yard rushing touchdown, Sire Padilla. Well, this is just student body right. You're going to see them pull everybody on the stretch play. Padilla gets to the corner, and he's gone. And I think right there, I think they were actually looking. Jaden Woods actually puts somebody down. And Hawkinson can't handle the snap back and has to eat it. So the PAT is unsuccessful, and it's 20 to 3. Gardner Edgerton on the road at Mill Valley. If you're Mill Valley's defense and you're looking at this, it's been three explosive plays, Kevin. A 43-yard run, a 46-yard pass reception, and a 47-yard run that have done all the damage to you so far this evening. But that ball, that play right there by Gardner Edgerton was blocked well. I mentioned the old student body right on the toss sweep. Get everybody stretching it out, and you're seeing the playmakers. We talked about it earlier, but Sire Padilla's got speed too. He gets the edge. Snap was good that Hawkinson just mishandled it. The sure-handed wide receiver and then uh, tried to ad-lib at Cronin right there to make the stop. So we'll see if that point hurts him. But yeah, that right side of that run was wide open there. And then Padilla with that 4-6 speed uh, got it going downhill. Seven plays, 80 yards, 3-10 off the clock. Padilla. Second rushing touchdown of the season. Jesse Owen was a star running back at Olathe North, so he has to appreciate the running of Padilla. Adrian to kick it back now to Mill Valley. So if you're Mill Valley, you're thinking, oh, okay, we moved it down, we got points, but then we give up a uh, touchdown back the other way. Momentum on the side of the visitors right now, but as we mentioned earlier, momentum can shift quickly in a Mill Valley game. I've seen it too many times against the likes of the Derby when they came in here. Also Gardner Edgerton last year. Adrian, the kick away. Williams is gonna let this go, and it'll be a touchback. Jesse Owen, 44 years old, and boy, he's got some energy. He coaches his varsity team, and then he just sits on the bench and waits for the fifth, sixth, and seventh graders to come out, and he coaches them. Some involved in that, but uh, we were uh, 
talking back and forth. How do you keep your energy up? Coach has more energy than me. I, I have an energy drink up here in the booth with me to make it through the ball games. First and ten. We get our first look now at uh, Connor Bohan as a quarterback. Baker running the football and takes a shot there. As he really took a whack. Let's see who it was. That was Dawson Kindler coming up from this. 38? Okay, so number 38. He was involved in this. Oh, maybe he doesn't make. Oh, he's in on the play. Yeah, he's involved. It looked like it was oh, that's, uh, that's Caleb Dewey, yeah, the Dewey uh, linebacker. Up. Yeah, came flying in. The big hit. It's kind of a linebacker slash safety that kind of roams around. He is their second leading tackler on the team. Second down and eight. Bohan breaking a tackle and then running right into Eli Porter. And those Porter twins. Boy, they are some uh, very uh, sure tacklers in the secondary. Well, one of the things Mill Valley through the first three weeks hasn't been super effective with is throwing the football, Kevin. And it's apparent right now that Gardner Edgerton is daring them to throw the ball because they're getting a lot of pressure inside. They're bringing some blitzes. And then their corners are really forcing and playing the run hard. This secondary with the Porter Twins, Randy Singleton, and Linden is a very strong secondary. And maybe Mill Valley is saying we don't want to test these guys. Hopefully you can get some ground game going. Quarterbacks haven't passed the ball that well this season. Now Bohan on third down and long. Going to attempt his first pass and incomplete to the sideline to Davion Harris. He got one hand on it. Couldn't reel it in. Fourth down punting time now for Mill Valley. Okay, just a short rollout here for Bohan. Little switch release on the outside to come back and a corner, but really nowhere to go with this football. Davion Harris did a nice job of trying to get that. But again, nowhere really to go with, for Bohan. Once again, they'll keep their quarterback out. Usually they'll drop him back to get into a punt formation. Randy Singleton is the man waiting to return the football. As Bohan, a little low line drive, not a very good punt. And again, good field position. Well, this is an important defensive stand right here coming up for Mill Valley. When I say defensive stand, they need a defensive stand right here. They're getting the ball back to start the second half. But this is an important drive right here with five minutes to go before halftime. It's going to be a 28-yard punt and good field position at the 47-yard line, and Braven Powell and the Trailblazer offense scrimmaging. It'll be Padilla. A couple of yards gained up the middle. And when you look at the differences in the flex bone with Dustin Delaney over a Randy Dryling flex bone, I think they throw more passes, more creative play calling. I think Coach Dryling plays a little closer to the vest, a little more conservative, but that's how I would see it with Coach Delaney against Coach Dryley. And here's Powell pulling it down and taking off. Powell down the sideline. Braven Powell inside the 10-5 touchdown. Gardner Edgerton. 51 yards. Braven Powell and Mark. That's four big plays for the visitors from Gardner Edgerton. Well, this is just a little quarterback counter, one of those little wrinkles off of it that we'll look at after this PAT attempt, which they're going to go for two here. They missed their last one on a bad hold by Hawkinson, and so they'll have to go for a two-point conversion. As Powell in the offense, breathing heavily, but staying out there. Kindler is the fullback here. And the quarterback will keep it, and he gets in. Two-point conversion successful. Braven Powell, number six, the man on the last drive for the Trailblazers. You see they're pulling 
The guard and the tackle from the backside right there. Two lead blockers out in front. He breaks contain, and then it's just all speed. Mill Valley secondary not taking some great angles here to try to cut him off deep down the field. He just does the rest with his legs. Two-point conversion. This is just a simple quarterback follow in this offense. Quarterback keep all the way. You saw the one-hand fake. <laughs> Making it a 28 to three here. Yeah. I talked about that being an important possession defensively. That was a quick strike. 51 yards and a couple of plays. It's 28-3 now. This is a big drive offensively for Mill Valley coming back the other direction now. Rarely do you see the four-time defending state champs 5A down 28 to three in the first half of a ball game on their home field. And here's Adrian to kick it back to Mill Valley. And this is a directional short kick. Up man comes up and feels it. His knee is down at the 31 yard line. So nice smart play there by one of the uh, special teamers is coming up and making the play is Braden Peter, a defensive back. You let that ball hit. And the Trailblazers might have it. Mark like mentioned that. it, like here that. it is. I like that little wrinkle right there. You've kicked it deep a couple of times. You're up big right now on the road, as you mentioned. Stay alert is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. If that ball bounces around a little bit, you jump on it, you're Gardner Edgerton, you've got a chance to, to score again. It'll be Bohan running the offense. Baker, short gain up the middle. As Easley was there to make the stop. Spencer Easley, one of the uh, defensive linemen in this 3-3 defense. Brian McCall is their defensive coordinator. Mark mentioned they're only allowed seven points through three games. Now 10 points if you include this one with the field goal. But Jesse Owen was, there's Coach McCall. Father John led Olathe North to a state championship. He was a fine defensive coach. Coaching at Truman now, I'm told. Second down and long. Bohan to the edge. Bohan pushed out of bounds by Dewey, the hybrid player. The cat, they call him, the linebacker slash safety. But it's another way to run stretch right here. Got Get your running back out, lead blocker. Nice job of sealing the edge. Right there by Davion Harris, who's lined up as a tight end. Allowing Bohan to pick up those yards and make this third and short. Yeah, third down and a couple facing Bohan. 4.0 GPA. Mark tells me he also plays baseball. He's got a good arm. <laughs> Bohan. To the short side of the field, not going to get the first down as Dewey waiting for him along with Eli Porter. And nothing gained. It'll be fourth down. And you said this was a critical drive. This is a critical decision here on fourth down, and they need about three yards. Well, it is. And Gardner Edgerton right now just being a little more physical up front. Dibiak yeah. was the guy that messed that and, play up because he knocked the blocker back the next week, I think. He did, and then Dewey's coming up to clean it up, right, on that piece. Yeah, but it was Dibiak. I mean, he sent that blocker flying backwards. Well, do you punt it or do you go for it here? The quarterback stays on the field, but then he'll drop back if they're going to punt. But, yeah, looks like he's going to punt it. And now we'll get a timeout first for Mill Valley. Well, the play clock was going down. It's an interesting decision right here for Coach Joel Appleby because you've got to get something going offensively, right? You haven't really got anything going yet outside of a couple of penalties on the one scoring drive where you kicked a field goal. You give Gardner Edgerton a shorter field and great field position here, but neither of your, two, your couple of punts have been really great either. And you're getting the ball back to start the second half. And, and when I say that is, you know, Gardner Edgerton has proven so far tonight the explosive plays have been huge. This is an interesting decision right here. I'd look for another hard count potentially, see if they can pick up the first down easily here before, before making that decision of what they want to do. Uh, 
under three before Hy-Vee at the half. Numbers and highlights brought to you by your employee-owned Hy-Vee stores. So after a Mill Valley timeout, now Gardner Edgerton does not have Singleton back this time. They are uh, playing their punt safe. Just punt it down the field, and again, off the side of the foot. The quarterback's doing the punting. Uh, I know there's deception. You want to keep the uh, defense honest, but if the guys aren't very good punters, it's going to cost you a lot of field position, and we've seen that tonight. Yeah, I think they're trying to also just get that end-over-end -end punt, and, you know, low line, and it's going to roll. They're not hitting the field with it. They're hitting the sidelines so. with it, and that's what's costing them a lot of field position. And now Gardner Edgerton full of uh, confidence and swagger on the road, takes over at the 42 after the short punt. Plenty of time, two timeouts in their back pocket, and big plays have been their story tonight. This time Padilla is stuffed, not much doing short gain for Sire Padilla. <laughs> stuffed on the play by Abe Schaefer. Now, if the last name sounds familiar, yes. If you're a big fan of 41 Sports, yes, Mick Schaefer, the sports anchor. That is his son, second son to come through here. Aiden came through first. Now they've got Abe in there. As this pass to the outside, wide open to Hawkinson. First down and more. Colton was waiting for some contact after he made the catch and said, wait a minute, I got a little cushion here. And he takes off for a uh, first down catch. Well, again, a lot of cushion on the outside. And quite you know, he makes a little juke to the outside and comes back in, but there was still a lot of space to the outside for him. One thing the you know, Valley's corners are doing, as I mentioned, a lot of cushion, willing to give that up. They just haven't made the tackles when they needed to on the outside so far here in this first half. Powell to throw, the slant to Singleton. Nifty space move. Randy Singleton again down the sidelines. They can't tackle number one tonight. Touchdown, Gardner Edgerton doing his best Debo Samuel impersonation out there tonight. And another big play for the Trailblazers. 42 yards, Randy Singleton from Braven Powell. Well, I mentioned a lot of cushion on the outside, Kevin. Same, they've run the same route. They've run that play. The only other pass they've really thrown was Singleton's other big touchdown run that was down the middle of the field where he sat down. Everything else has been a simple hitch to the outside and let Offense. those guys go make Five plays. Penalty. Retry. This is on the kicking team, so they'll get moved back, so Adrian will have to a little longer PAT attempt from 25 yards out. His PAT attempt is up and good. And it's 35-3 as we approach halftime. Gardner Edgerton all over Mill Valley. Again, this is just a three-step drop. Hitch the outside, little move inside, and then Singleton gave him the dead leg. Right? Just, had, just enough hesitation. Right here, just this little, little dead leg, little move, just enough hesitation to get the extra step on the outside. And another explosive play over 40 yards, Kevin. That is that is four plays, five plays now, over 40 yards on the touchdowns for Gardner Edgerton here tonight. Big receiving night for Randy Singleton, who came in with 165 and three touchdowns. Tonight has 137 and three touchdowns. Eight touchdown passes for Braven Powell. And shocker here in Shawnee. 35 to three. The homecoming crowd pretty quiet they're right not, now. They're not used to this here in Shawnee at Mill Valley. And this is gonna reach the end zone, the back of the end zone. Big kick this time by Adrian. Lane is coming back out with the offense. I 
got the special uniforms on tonight on homecoming 2023 here at Mill Valley. Also homecoming at DeSoto as well. Both teams and both schools in the same school district. It's Jags undercover. Jags down big as we approach halftime. They'll start at the 20-yard line. Blaine in at quarterback. Baker, the run. Baker breaking a tackle. And Baker with a first down. Now to the 34, 14 yards by Tristan Baker. Well, that's a good start to this drive. Your Mill Valley right here. You got to get some momentum going. But you're going to have to turn up the uh, speed of the offense if you want points before halftime. Mill Valley still has two timeouts, but they don't seem to be wanting to snap the ball fast. Blaine going to throw on the first down. And it's Baker the catch, and he'll get out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Gain of seven. Well, Blaine could have held onto that ball just a little bit longer. He actually had Watts wide open down the middle of the field. But makes a nice save read to the outside. Gets out of bounds, stops the clock for Mill Valley. Second down, Blaine stepping up in the pocket, tucking and running, and he'll run for the first down near midfield. Blaine. Now I think you can pick up the pace, Kevin. Yep. Gardner Hutchinson still has two timeouts as well. So you didn't want to get in a three and out situation real quick, you know, with your timeouts where you had to punt the football away. That's a good away. point, yeah. And now you're midfield. You can try to pick it up a little bit. You still got plenty of time here with a minute to go and two timeouts in your pocket if you're Mill Valley. On the midfield stripe, first and 10, play action. Blaine rolling, now throwing back to Baker down the field on a little wheel route, incomplete. Coverage there by Savis and the Mike linebacker. He was not fooled there on the uh, wheel route to the uh, running back out of the backfield. Number 45, say most improved player on their defense. Good coverage right there, not getting fooled on that play. Mill Valley trying to take a shot. I like it on first down in that situation. Yeah, I love the play call. Get a linebacker isolated on a running back. But Good coverage by Thomas Saviston. Second down and 10, Blaine. And a scramble drill, now throwing on the run. Too tall, incomplete, as Andy Watts was who he was looking for. Now third down and 10 for midfield. Remember, this secondary for Gardner Edgerton, a lot of experience in the Porter Twins and Randy Singleton back there. And then you got uh, Jake Linden, who had two interceptions last year before he uh, busted his collarbone. Bojanski also plays as well. So this is a very experienced secondary. Gardner Edgerton putting out there. Third down and 10 from midfield, and now we're going to get a uh, timeout for Mill Valley. No, check that. Gardner Edgerton takes the timeout. I beg your pardon. Interesting timeout right there by Gardner Edgerton. They obviously didn't like what their call was or the way guys were lined up. Because I think right there with third down, you would, if you're Jesse Owen, you don't want to take that timeout in that situation with 44 seconds to go. You want Mill Valley to run a play, maybe even run the ball, because then you can use that timeout and still have one left. Number one in the 6A poll, taking on number one in the 5A state poll. But all that really is accomplished tonight is this is a Sunflower League game. Some people still play for these conference crowns. These two teams have higher goals. They want that big trophy in November. A surprising first half, 35-3, Gardner Edgerton with the big plays. Five scores over 40 yards each. And now, we'll flip back to Andy Watts trying to get to the edge, and he'll get run out by 
Randy Singleton, who else? Mr. Uh, big play in the first half. Randy Singleton, the free safety, makes the stop. And it's going to be fourth down coming up. Still going to need about seven, eight yards on the play. A little uh, trickery, but Singleton speed at the edge here denied the first down. Yeah, Mill Valley having to go to this, this play a little earlier than they want to, probably in the playbook. Saying fourth down and six on the Jag Stadium scoreboard. That's what we'll go for. As Blaine drops back to punt it away, maybe. Well, GE says nobody's back, and this is their best punt of the night. This is going to land in the field of play. Now, can they down it inside the five? No, they cannot. So the special team's not working. Yes, they had a man right there, but he could not down it. And as that ball was hot on the ground there, that was a uh, worm burner with heat on it. It was, but he tried 47-yard punt. I think he tried to get a little greedy down there and get that down near the one-yard line. Like right here, he should just go catch this ball. He, he lets it bounce that extra time right there. Yep. Kind of loses track of where he is. At that point, anything inside the 10-yard line is good for you if you're Mill Valley. Sangaroth. One of the fastest guys on Mill Valley has the speed to get down there, but should have just grabbed that one uh, and uh, taken it at the three. They'll take a knee, and we have reached halftime. Brave and Powell runs off with the football as his team has had five scores of over 40 yards on the road at Mill Valley. And it's a surprising score at halftime, 35-3. to three. The visitors... State runners up in 6A. Gardner Edgerton leading 35 to 3 at the halftime break. Let's check in with Bethany with Jesse Owen. Coach, you told me this week that your team after last year's finish has a lot of confidence. How confident are they playing right now in this first half? Well, they're, they're playing well, obviously, and just pleased with their effort and their focus. Any adjustments in the locker room? Your defense has only given up three points. Offense is rolling two, so I don't know if there's a lot to make. Well, defensively, they, they threw a couple of wrinkles in there in the run game uh, on that last possession we need to, we need to address. But uh, we've just got to stay dialed in and finish the game. Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Coming up, high V at the half, 35-3. Gardner Edgerton undefeated. Trying to pull the upset on the road and spoil Mill Valley's homecoming. As we'll have high V at the half. To these messages here on Spectrum News. High V at the half and grilling. Yes, they're doing a lot of tailgating here on a homecoming night at Mill Valley, but the fans, Mark Bo Richter, in a little bit of a state of shock. <laughs> this team's won four straight state titles in 5A, and they don't trail 35-3 to at halftime very much, but uh, they are grilling these uh, Jags. Uh, that's uh, the Trailblazers side of things. Uh, the, your first half thoughts, I mean, the, the big plays are just killing them. Team speed seems to be on the side of the Trailblazers. Uh, let's take a look at one of the big uh, stars of the first half, Randy Singleton, number one for the Trailblazers. Well, team speed, as you talked about it, and it's been all number one. Like, he's had three catches and three touchdowns. Like, all he's doing is catching touchdowns, and it's it's his explosiveness and speed on the outside. Mill Valley's secondary hasn't taken some great angles, really, with him, and then, of course, you mix in a couple moves from him, and then his speed, and he's able to hit pay dirt three different times today so far. Three catches, 137 yards on the night. And this one, of course, is a little more all him with a few moves as well. But it's been all Gardner Edgerton here in the first half. And really, it's been the explosive plays and the playmakers on the outside. And really, they've done most of their damage on the edge, right? Like, it's been these simple hitch routes. We saw Padilla's play was on, on the edge as well. And then when you looked at, at Braven Powell's run, simple quarterback counter, but it was outside. They've done all their damage on the perimeter to Mill Valley here in the first half. But Mill Valley will get the football to start the third quarter. They won the coin toss and deferred their option to the second half. And I mean, you're going to put Blaine in? You're going to put Bohan? Are you going to have to throw a lot? What's the, what's the 
formula as far as uh, Mill Valley coming I, out of the halftime locker room. I look at this right now for Mill Valley getting getting this ball back to start the second half, right, Kevin? Is you got to stick with with what you want to do in your philosophy, right? And that's for them is running the football. Everything starts through that. They were ha they were having a little more success with their quarterback runs in the first half than they were, you know, throwing the football on the perimeter. I think you got to continue to do that. But you can't just go into be completely one dimensional right now. You're down 35 3. You got to try to get yourself back in this game, but it starts on this drive of going down and trying to get a touchdown first. Coming up next week, another Sunflower League matchup, and it'll be Gardner Edgerton playing host to Olathe North. Now, this will be an interesting matchup. Two 6A teams. Of course, Olathe North has star running back TJ Porter, who had six touchdowns last week against Shawnee Mission North. And uh, both teams. Uh, more than likely going to come in uh, undefeated unless we see a Mill Valley comeback here in the second half. Uh, should be an interesting ball game there. Olathe North always a, a powerhouse. But as far as the first half of this ball game, the difference in physicality, that goes to the visitors. Speed, that goes to the visitors. Gardner Edgerton, and uh, right now, you know, they're playing good football, not a lot of penalties, no turnovers, smart football, and they got the big lead on the road. They do have the big lead on the road. They haven't turned the football over. We haven't seen a single turnover in this game yet. That's what's one, what is one thing that, you know, Mill Valley is going to have to do is try to get Gardner Edgerton to turn the football over. You're going to have to get a couple of those types of breaks if you want to get back in this game. Well, we've seen some physical plays on both sides. We knew that would be the case when these two get together. Well, the, the, pads, the, the pads were popping early on in this game, and you talked about it. There was some physical play. And a big portion of the physical play has come from Gardner Edgerton. Now this one right here was actually flagged for a penalty. It's a good call. It was a good call. It's been a, you know, a, a point of enforcement this year, point of emphasis. Player safety, yep. Player safety all the way around. And, and that was a call that had to be made in that situation. It wasn't necessarily late, but it was kind of up in the head and neck area. A bang bang play, but it was a good call in that situation for sure. Gardner edging and out of the locker room. There's Randy Singleton, who's been the star of the first half. He just can't seem to tackle this guy in space. And now here comes the Jaguars out of their locker room. But once again, uh, this place is a little bit shell shock right now as far as the uh, home bleachers are concerned, as they're down the 35 to 3. This is a team that's won nine in a row dating back to last year. Four straight state titles, but uh, Gardner Edgerton bringing it to him in Jaguar Stadium tonight here in week four of the Kansas high school football season. And homecoming fans, uh, a little shock. Of course, we got a dance coming up. I don't know. They always say you lose the homecoming game, it spoils the dance, but uh, might spoil your weekend uh, if you're a Mill Valley fan. I think, look, there's a lot of game left here, right? We got a whole second half to play here, and Mill Valley can get back in this. But no matter what happens here, this is against a 6A school who you know is really, really good. You can take a lot of things away from this game and get yourself ready to go for the rest of your season and into the playoffs. Mom, it's past my bedtime. It's 35-3 at halftime. Well, who should we see more of, Bohan or Blaine, the, the uh, two-headed monster at uh, quarterback? Uh, seemed like we saw more snaps for Blaine in the first half. We saw a little bit more from Blaine in the first half, but I don't know. This is also a situation where they've played both these guys all year, right? Um... And neither one of them has really established themselves yet as the guy and, and providing that spark that, that they need. They're still trying to figure that out. This is a good opportunity here for both of these guys to come out and try to give this offense a spark and, and maybe cement the, the position as, as being the starter here. Now I've said it a few times tonight. If they're going to come out and start throwing. This secondary for Gardner-Edgerton is very, very good with the Porter Twins, Singleton. 
And also Linden back there, so look out. You want to try to air it out in a comeback, you're going to do it against one of the top secondaries in Class 6A in Gardner Edgerton. Well, there's just a lot of overall team speed, and you talked about it. No, with, that, with that experience, secondary as well. The other thing is Mill Valley hasn't really been in great situations offensively to open up the playbook either. When I say open up the playbook, being able to dictate what you want to do and not letting the down and distance dictate what you want to do. Well, let's check in with Bethany. She talked with Mill Valley coach Joel Appleby. Thanks, guys. Yep, I you know, really like Coach Appleby and his approach. Obviously, unfamiliar territory here for the Jaguars, but he said, you know, the locker room was good, high spirits. As you know, despite the score kind of getting out of hand here, 35 to 3, he said that on offense, you're just a couple blocks away, you know, from opening some gaps and, and you know, maybe getting some big runs and, and also in the pass game. And then on defense, the obvious, they just need to tackle better. He was, you know, pretty, pretty plain and simple about that and kind of smiled when he said, we just, we just got to tackle some guys. So, you know, big plays for Gardner Edgerton have really hurt the Jags. I think you eliminate some of those. We could see a much better second half. Is it too much of a gap already? I don't know, but I think we'll see a little more fight from the Jags here in the second half. Coach Appleby got the six state titles. On a streak now, a four straight in 5A. And has to play from a large deficit at halftime. His team will have the football to start the third quarter. Coach Jesse Owen. Said he wanted to make a few adjustments as far as his defense with some of the running plays that they, I think he was specifically talking about that to end around or that reverse thing. I don't, I don't know that they saw that. And instead, they just that's used their great speed I, by uh, Cam Porter to shut that play down. I also feel like he was being extremely polite and trying to find something oh, they I could get you. a little better at, you know, over the course of the second half here because they've really played essentially a, a flawless first half. Yeah, I mean, very few penalties, no turnovers, big plays. Gave up a field goal. Their defense. Really, the penalty that they did have was a cost. It would cost them a turnover. They yeah. had an interception on the play, so that penalty was costly. Adrian to kick off. Gardner Edgerton, all white, black uniforms, white helmets for Mill Valley as we start the third quarter on a blackout homecoming game for Mill Valley, but they are down big as Adrian sending it in the end zone. Good job of kicking. And let's see what quarterback they want to send out. It looks like Blaine is coming out. Daniel Blaine, the 5'10 senior. Saw him run the football pretty well in the first half. Baker in the backfield. On setback. And this will be Baker to the outside. Baker gets a couple on the play. Second down and long. Once again, the speed to the edge, Gardner Edgen there's, there's just, has it. There's right just now. no room out here, right, for him to go because he's got two blockers out there. They're doing a nice job, but it's the pursuit inside from the linebackers of Gardner Edgerton. The offensive line of the Mill Valley has not been able to get up to the second level and cut that those linebackers off, allowing Porter. any space on that perimeter. Cam Porter got there but missed him. He saw the speed. Now we're getting Mill Valley timeout early third quarter. Interesting on that. Well, the, play, the play clock was, was going down. I looked a little confused on who was supposed to be on the line of scrimmage on the perimeter from the receiver side of things. And then we're kind of rushed and moving. They always shift their back a little bit. If you notice this Mill Valley offense, they always move their back into that sidecar position one way or the other. A little bit of motion. Joel Appleby taking a timeout right there just to get him set. Hi-V, proud to support Kansas City High School Athletics. 
Kevin White, Bethany Bowman, and Mark Bo Richter in Shawnee, Kansas. Jaguar Stadium, Mill Valley High School. The number one team in 5A in big trouble as we play in the third quarter. This will be Baker breaking a tackle. And Baker will run for the first down down his own sideline. Tristan Baker. Nice Moving little the chains. Nice little counter play right here by Mill Valley. This is the counters. Fake that jet sweep. Come back. Inside. Dibiak not able to make the tackle. That's something that really Mill Valley hasn't done here in the first half either. Is break, break a tackle or two. Tristan Baker able to do that and pick up the first down. There's Baker. Oh, man. He got nailed on the play. Kindler and Taviston, the two linebackers, just sandwich him here. And set number 21 spiraling backwards. Just when you think there's going to be a little bit of space, there isn't, right? Kindler sitting right there. Man. There's Dawson. Senior was their fullback last year and a star player, but has moved to Will Linebacker and star on the defensive side of the ball. Blaine, all kinds of time and low, incomplete. Pass intended for Fisher, the tight end. Had that nice catch in the first half. That's a smart play by Daniel Blaine, actually, on this play. He threw this ball at the feet of his receiver. But he's really just throwing this ball away. There was nowhere with him to go to the with the football. Did a nice job of not trying to force that in there. Just throw that away at his feet. Now you're faced with third down and ten. Let's see if Brian McCall wants to dial up a blitz or heat up the quarterback. And the throw down the field. Incomplete. Couldn't hang on was Watts. A little behind him. It's a nice job by Daniel Blaine right here. Hanging in the pocket. He's going to get some pressure coming his direction. Puts this ball really where it needs to be. And I thought actually Watson dropped that, but that was a nice little play. Looked like the defender got his hand in there maybe at the exact same time to knock that away. Well, fourth down and 10. And now you get a penalty flag down. Looks like the offense Full moved start. early. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. You see Gene Weir, the legendary Olathe North coach with Coach Appleby. Penalties, doesn't matter uh, how experienced a coach you are. They're just killers. That's his offensive line group, yep, too. Yep, That's yep. They take pride in that, too. That little shake of the head. Just Randy Singleton back to take this punt. And they're punting away from Singleton. That's a pretty good idea. They keep this one in the field to play. And, Mark, you were talking about that uh, field turf roll that you get down to the 20-yard line. So it ends up being like a 51-yard punt if you keep it in the field to play and let it roll. It's kind of the end-over-end -end rugby style of kick. Especially when you're using your uh, quarterbacks out yeah. there. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't have to be pretty. What, what about the night for Brave and Powell? Pretty good there. Pretty yeah, good numbers Pretty there. good. Six of six. I mean, five of those have been, you know, pretty simple pitch and catches to the outside. I'm not taking anything away from it, but. Good. Good. Padilla, so far, 100%. The fullback for a couple to the 22. Padilla had the uh, long uh, touchdown run of 47 yards. Second down and eight. Pitch it out. And this is the uh, most experienced wingman, Butash. We saw him last year. He has good speed to the edge. And he's close to the first down. The key player down there, playoff stretch a year ago, Butash, right here, just on the on the option, does a nice job of cutting this back up inside. And again, yards after the first bit of contact. Right? All night long has been the case. Yeah, 700 yards, five touchdowns last year. And this play is going to be stopped. 
Third down and a nice play by Sam Coletti, number 51. The defensive end came crashing down and made a big hit on the fullback. And it's going to be fourth down facing Gardner Edgerton. Also, that was Heller there as well. Heller's had a good game tonight. Yeah. The sophomore on the defensive line. Had a couple of those nice plays knifing in. Well, fourth down and a yard. It looked like they're going to go for it. And a quick pitch to the edge. Ellis, first down and more. Grant Ellis, the right wing, gets it, and he gets for a big gain and a first down. That's his first touch of the night. Now, Butash on the wings usually gets a lot of these, but this is uh, Ellis's first touch. It's a big one for a first down run. It is, and it's the exact same play that Padilla scored on earlier on in the game. Just running the toss sweep, outflanking Mill Valley's defense, and just nobody able to get out on the perimeter to shut that down. And a big fourth down play. Kevin, how many times have we seen this on fourth down? You and I, right? These types of conversions, fourth and short. All of a sudden, there's a big play because you're selling out defensively in that short yardage situation. A lot of times that happens up inside, but that time, out on the perimeter, yeah, Grant Ellis, listed as the left wing back, goes for 32, and then you got Butash at the right wing back. And uh, Grant has a good speed. Has a couple of rushing touchdowns on the year, but we'll get a uh, timeout. You look at the new defensive coordinator, Mike Strack, talking to the defense. Mike uh, taking over. Drew Hudgens now at uh, Blue Valley North. Longtime defensive coordinator at uh, Mill Valley is running Blue Valley North's program and doing a great job. And here's Mike Strack with the headset on. So both teams with two timeouts left. Timeout by uh, Gardner Edgerton. Now a pass down the field. Wide open man is Hawkinson for the touchdown for Gardner Edgerton. 39 yards as Hawkinson got behind the defense and not by a little bit, by a lot, by about five to seven yards. And Braven Powell hit him for another touchdown on the night. It's a four touchdown night for Braven Powell. Now has nine on the season without an interception. And this is getting ugly on homecoming night for Mill Valley as Adrian tacks on the extra point. It's now 42-3 GE. Well, he originally ran a little bit of a curl and then released to the post. A little double move on the outside. And there's no safety help in the middle of the field. And this is an easy throw again. Wide open is Hawkinson. And another explosive play on the touchdown for Gardner Edgerton. That was the short one. No. Only 39. Yeah, yards. only 39 there. The others have been longer. Five plays, 80 yards. Hawkinson he now has two touchdowns on the season. He had nine last year. Bleachers packed to the gills with Blue and Gardner Edgerton fans, and they're loving things here in Shawnee as they're putting it on Mill Valley, who beat them last year 35 to 14. Adrian sends it in to end zone for another touchback. Let's get a sideline report. Here's Bethany Bowman. Yeah, guys, I also just wanted to kind of reiterate what you said all game. Dawson Kindler for Gardner Edgerton playing on the defense now. It's, you know, not uncommon for teams to switch around guys and get their best athletes on the field, but this is a guy that rushed for over 1,500 yards and 30 touchdowns last year for Gardner's 6A state runner-up team. Okay, thanks, Bethany. Bohan in at quarterback, and he is gang tackled after a, a short pickup. 
Mohan. Taller of the two quarterbacks. Not as good a runner, I would say, just going by yards per carry average. Blaine has a higher yards per carry average. Small sample size. Running play, Baker. Nice form tackle there. Looked like Kindler got him. Bethany mentioned was a star running back, but doing what's best for the team. Now playing Will Linebacker. He's a very good linebacker as well. The linebacker play from Gardner Edgerton has been really good tonight. When you look at, at Kindler in there and and, and, uh, and Dewey and, and Debiak, they've, they've done a nice job of getting to the football. And the defensive line of Gardner Edgerton is not letting the offensive lineman in Mill Valley get up to the second level. Second level run here, though. It, Bohan gets the first down and it's grabbed by the face mask, so there'll be a tack on uh, penalty. Flags coming in from both sides. That was pretty obvious. Face mask penalty. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense. That 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down, Bill Valley. Max Nichols, the defensive lineman, number 81. Grabbing the face mask. So with the 15 yard tacked on, all at midfield now for Mill Valley. Baker running short side. And he'll get about five, six yards on that uh, first down run. Nice job on the outside, Gus Hawkins right there. You talked about K-State commit, doing a great job on that reach block. Allowing Baker to get to the outside. Second down and five. Baker, not much there as he is uh, engulfed by Chris Marcos, 6'9", and 350 pounds a senior getting college looks, but uh, that's a big body out there on the field. Uh, he is uh, one of the interior nose guards and uh, really tall for a nose yeah. guard as well. 6'9", you know, yeah. See usually that tall a guy up in the middle at that nose guard position, but did a nice job shedding the block and making the play there. Third down and four. Bohan play action. Throwing and complete. He got his tight end there. Brigham with the catch and the first down. Brody's first catch of the game. Play action rollout. Brigham does a nice job of taking that in. Cam Porter right there as well defensively in on that tackle. Now to the 35 yard line, first and 10. Yes. Needing points in a hurry, Mill Valley. Back to pass, Bohan, little screen pass, Davion Harris, good open field stop. As that's Cam Porter again. Those Porters, boy, I tell you what, they say they're uh, really strong kids, pound for pound, some of the strongest kids, but you talk about fundamentals and tackling, they do a great job. This has been the difference in this game. As you see Harris just kind of leak out right there, but it's these types of tackles in the open field that Gardner Edgerton has made tonight that Mill Valley has not. Because he doesn't make that tackle right there, he's running for at least another five to 10 yards. Instead, it was no gain on the screen pass. Second down and 10. Harris was the big star of the state championship game with the three touchdowns, a couple of rushing touchdowns and a touchdown catch. As they beat Avery Johnson and Mays for their fourth straight. Now Bohan floats it, finds Watts, and Watts takes a hard hit, a yard shy of the first down. Gain of nine to Andy Watts. Really nice job by Bohan to buy himself a little bit of time out here because he could have run this ball but he only would have picked up a couple of yards when he gets out here. Nice job of being patient. 
lets Watts get open, hits him and brings up this third and one. Bohan short side, and he's now, well, second effort. I didn't think he was gonna get it, but a good second effort, and he'll move the chains. Bohan looked like he was gonna get stopped short. Senior able to make a nice second effort right here at the end here. You think, oh, well, look at all these whites. And then he just breaks a tackle and gets free for the first down. Move the chains for the Jaguars. A little indecisive right there. I thought he should have stuck his head down inside that block, but able to slip the tackles and pick up the first down for the Jaguars. Baker. The right hash to the 20 yard line. And quick game of five yards. <laughs> Better job by the offensive line right there, opening the hole, allowing yep. him to get up to the second level. Baker uh, looks like he got a cut there on his left hand. Saw that earlier. He's going to stay out there. go with jet sweep action to Andy Watts and he is blown up Dewey the hybrid player the uh, player that plays linebacker he plays strong safety but he is like a torpedo coming at the uh, running bar of the uh, wide receiver Watts makes a nice stop there notice too on that replay just the amount of emphasis of Gardner Edgerton to get to the edge defensively and say we're not going to let him get the corner on us. We're going to turn it back into the side to the pursuit of our linebackers. Actually lost a yard. Third down and seven. Play action. Looping pass to Davion Harris. Incomplete. Great coverage there by Cam Porter. Cam was surveying to see if there was going to be a flag. But the coverage uh, was very good. Looked like Davion Harris didn't really pick up this football. Yep. Looked like right there that he kind of lost it. Either in the lights or didn't see it because he kind of slowed up and gave the appearance that Porter may have been holding him, but a good no call. Well, fourth down and seven. Jags will go for it. Down big here in the third quarter. Play action. Bohan throwing on the run and incomplete. Great. Break on the ball, Randy Singleton. Guess who? Boy, he's doing it on both sides of the ball tonight, Mark. What well, an angle he I, took here. I don't know if it's been obvious yet, but I think Randy Singleton's the player of the game in this game. But does a nice job here of getting that hand up there, no interference, times it up perfectly, and makes another play for Gardner Edgerton. Yeah, Randy. Uh, over 100 yards receiving, three touchdowns, and uh, man, just a great break on the ball. Ball over on downs now to Gardner Edgerton and their offense. Late stages, third quarter. They'll take over at their own 21 yard line, first and 10. And they lined up at the football and then went back to the huddle. So, Nemo Snipe is your uh, fullback in this set. And the pitch, not great to Ellis. He one hops it and then, and able to get yardage back to the 20, but that's gonna be a loss on the play. As uh, Jaden Woods makes the stop. This pitch, pitch is low, low and wide. Yeah. Low to begin with. Yeah, that does a nice job at least trying to get something out of absolutely nothing right there to get back close to the line of scrimmage. Well, you got the big lead. You don't want to get sloppy with your play and your pitches. And loss of one, second down and 11. Powell to throw and high and wide of Hawkinson who has that touchdown catch. That's the first incompletion of the game by Powell. Good point. He'd been perfect prior to that. 
39 yard touchdown pass to Hawkinson. earlier in the third quarter. Third down and 11. Looks like Padilla back in at the fullback slot. And now Powell steps and throws, and the pass gonna be intercepted. Mill Valley able to take it away. Stepping in front was Jackson Lawler with the interception as he took a good angle our first turnover as Jackson celebrates the INT is by Gardner Edgerton. Well, Mill Valley needed a spark and this was it. Fake the toss sweep. This ball started a little bit late down the field. Doesn't get quite enough on it because Hawkinson was actually open. But a great play to step in front of that. We talked earlier, Mill Valley's going to need some turnovers here to get something going in the second half. Maybe this will spark them. First interception of the season thrown by Braven Powell. And the play is blown dead as we got flags, flags down. Flags on the play. Dead ball. Encroachment. Defense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. This will be a first and five. Yeah, the big lead. Talking to coach uh, Jesse Owen, he says his team has gotten a sloppy sometimes. And you know, their turnover ratio is only uh, plus one. He thought, man, had all these takeaways, but we, we've gotten sloppy. So come fat and happy when you got the big lead and start making mistakes. Here's Bohan, buying time, throwing down the field low and incomplete. That one was intended for Fisher, the tight end. This will be second down and five as we're under a minute to play in your third quarter. Big lead for the visitors. Gardner Edgerton, big play night. They got uh, all their scores are 39 yards or more tonight. They had one turnover. They just threw an interception, but otherwise they have been spectacular on the road. It's the number one team in 5A. There's Baker, some running room, first down. As he's inside the 30-yard line, Tristan Baker. They're going to pull their right guard, does a nice job. A little kick out block, and then Baker, you mentioned what an important part of their state championship run he was a year ago in this offense with his experience. They had Hayden Jay, who's now at Northwest Missouri State. There's Baker with running room again. And he breaks a tackle. And Tristan Baker into the end zone. Touchdown, Mill Valley, late third quarter. And that is his third rushing touchdown of the year. 28 yards, Tristan Baker. Well, it's almost taken three full quarters, Kevin, for the lights to flash here at Jaguar Stadium. But this was a well-blocked play. PAT try, Lofman out of the hold of uh, Blaine, and it's up and good. So the interception, by Lawler, sets up the touchdown run by uh, Baker. Nice job of blocking down the field as well by Mill Valley, well blocked. All keyed off that turnover, as you mentioned. There is uh, 41 sports anchor Mick Schaefer. Kind of like that touchdown run, Mick. But uh, yeah, you've been, you've been uh, in contact with Mick uh, throughout the game. He's he's not a happy camper tonight. No, this has been a rough one so far. If you're a Jaguar fan. I think coming in, everybody knew Gardner Edgerton was a really good football team. 
as well as this Mill Valley team is still a really good team. Over 100 yards rushing for Baker and the touchdown. Went for 28 yards. Do we onside kick here or is it uh, pooch kick or? Gardner Edgerton looks like they have the hands team and I see Randy Singleton running on. I know that's their hands team there at midfield, so. And now they're gonna have to take a timeout as some of the hands team came out and some of them didn't, so. Not enough guys on yep, the field. Yeah, they didn't have enough players out there and that's not gonna make Coach Owen happy. That's his angry face, by the way. And I talked about the sloppy play when you get the big lead, the interception, the penalties, the face mask, you give up the long touchdown run. That's why that face is angry and well, guys not uh, doing their assignment. That here. discussion right there is just because we're up 42 to 10 right now at this point, we can't be having a good time on the sideline. If you're on the hands team, and some of the guys on special teams, a lot of times, you know, they're not starters for the most part on things. Even on the hands team, you got to get some guys out there that that's their job is to get out there and not paying attention. So they had to burn the time out. And uh, that will be timeout number two. So they'll have one left. According to the uh, stadium uh, scoreboard, Gardner Edgerton has one timeout. Mill Valley has two. And now we'll see the onside kick, we think. Mill Valley now will step back out of their hands team, expecting the low roller set up in a normal fashion as Mothman sends a little directional kick that's fielded and Nice play there by Gardner Edgerton. Just take a knee. Brett Casita. Looked like he was one getting he the was, chewing on the yeah. sideline, and he makes a nice <laughs> play why there. Or he's down the field oh, right, right there well, in that situation. He makes the catch and goes down. So uh, Casita got uh, chewed a little bit, but makes a nice play thereafter. I think right there too. You heard kind of in the mics in the background. You could hear, you know, fair catch, fair catch. You know, ideally you do it, but. Secure the football right there, nice job. Pitch out to the edge, running room, and across midfield, as that is uh, Griffin Martin, senior running back, getting his first touch of the game. So some of the uh, backups getting some time here with the third quarter clock running out, and Gardner Edgerton leading big on the road through three quarters on the High V High School Game of the Week here on Spectrum News. There is the High V scoring by quarters in dominating fashion for Gardner Edgerton. Both teams with a uh, touchdown in the third quarter, but start the uh, fourth quarter. Braven Powell keeping it and running it on the short side of the field. A first down run. He's inside the 35, and uh, I think people would be shocked if they saw Braven Powell in person because he is actually pretty big. 6'4", 195, good-looking athlete, Braven Powell of Gardner Edgerton. Yeah, we talked about him in the open and just his speed, overall speed. We saw it on his touchdown run earlier. Saw a little bit of a burst right there, picking up the first down. But I mean, he's, he's bigger than I thought. When I saw him, I was like, well, this guy's a speed guy. He's, he's about my size. Wrong. He is big, athletic, and uh, he's not an easy tackle. Yes, they'll run it with their fullback to the 30-yard uh, line. Getting some of the uh, new faces in the game. Well, we've seen uh, Nemo in the ball game earlier. Nehemiah Snipe, a uh, sophomore. Good speed. Now Padilla back in. This team going to be in no hurry. It's Going to try to manage the clock, keep it running, and get ready for Olathe North next week. We'll have that ball game for you on uh, Spectrum News next Friday night, the 29th. Olathe North and Gardner Edgerton. Boy. As there's Butash, first down, dragging tacklers inside the 15 as he is stopped. 
near the 10 yard line. Looks like it might be a goal to go situation. Brutash to the edge and uh, makes first down run. Reverend Powell did a nice job there getting that pitch out quick because that was, he had to get that ball out quickly to Butash. And Butash breaking some more tackles. First and goal. Pitch to the edge. Block well. Butash in front. And he touches the pylon with the football. That is Griffin Martin. Touchdown, GE. Griffin Martin behind the block of Butash. On a 10-yard rushing touchdown for Gardner Edgerton. So the backups getting some time and getting into the end zone. And that's just a good ball placement of just hitting the uh, orange uh, pylon there. And official said that is a touchdown is Adrian. Perfect night with his PATs. Griffin Martin, 10-yard touchdown run. It's just that toss sweep they run effectively all night. Get the edge again. And right there, you see crossing the goal line, crossing the plane of the goal line as it reaches this ball out. That's a good call. He's got possession of the ball. It's right across the goal line for a touchdown. Miss something? Did the PAT miss there? The scoreboard says 48-10. I thought they said good. But apparently not. So scoreboard at 48-10. So the perfect night is over for Adrian as he goes to tee it up and kick off. He's done a good job of kicking the ball. I thought the official signal was good, but uh, scoreboard has not changed to uh, 49. Adrian, that's the uh, official signal, and he'll knock it into the end zone. All right, let's go back to the uh, PAT. Like uh, it was up and good, and the official signal it, but the stadium scoreboard did not acknowledge that. So we'll have to use our uh, scoreboard on the screen there as correct 49 10 with Mill Valley uh, coming up. There's the scoreboard, just changed. All right. So it is 49 10. And when you're old like me, uh, you know, sometimes you miss stuff. I thought, well, maybe I missed it there. I thought it was good. Here's Baker on a running play. Just had a, a touchdown run of 28 yards. Hit a gain of about three yards on this run. Well, now if you're Mill Valley, uh, we've seen this team rebound after losses. I mean, last year they lost to Olathe North and went on that state run, beating Mays in the championship 28-14. So coaching moments ahead for uh, Joel Appleby and his staff. Baker on the uh, short side, easily with the tackle, but Baker able to carry him very close to the first down. You talk about coaching moments for his staff, right? Like, this is the type of game, you mentioned getting knocked off by Olathe North a year ago. Like, you know, today this game doesn't really matter, right? To Mill Valley moving forward on things, it does matter, but you can take a lot out of this game and look at a lot of the stuff you've got to work on here moving forward. Was a first down run. Yeah, they lost week seven to Olathe North, 20 to 16. And a tough night for them losing to the Eagles, but then they rebounded and won the rest of their games. Baker, a nice run. But yeah, I mean, the uh, red flags may have been out after the 14 7 win against. Shawnee Mission Northwest, but don't uh, sell Shawnee Mission Northwest short. They're a younger group, but 
Got a lot of sophomores and underclassmen, and but Bo Black told me, yeah, those guys have been winning throughout their youth football and middle school days, so he thought uh, they would be very good and not be intimidated on Friday night. So but, uh, here's Baker as he's taken down, but uh, the quarterback play is a situation that's different from uh, last year with this Mill Valley team from Hayden Jay to uh, Blaine and Bohan. Is, Sevastin making the stop. They got to get better quarterback play, but that was on the list of things that they were they were worried about. Well, they haven't got a ton of separation either in the secondary. We talked about how good this Gardner Edgerton secondary is and experience as well. Baker tripped up. And it's going to be fourth down. They still need about a yard. Dewey involved in the stop. Woods goes out there as a, uh, looks like an extra receiver or an extra tight end. He's lined up in a right wing area, the star defensive player. So Jaden Woods out there. And the ball is punted away. And nobody back for Gardner Edgerton. This one. It's more of a GE roll and stopped at the 31-yard uh, line. So 30 yards, no return. Jaden Woods firing up his teammates as the offense coming out for uh, Gardner Edgerton. Leading 49-10. to 10. He's got 7-18 to play. And Powell back out. He's had a good night throwing the football. Four touchdown passes. Also ran for a touchdown as well. Think of all the plays, Mark. I think he had the longest one, the 51-yard uh, touchdown run. Uh, they're all pretty close, but 51 uh, is the longest there on the uh, Powell run. Yeah, we saw the explosion that they've had. And really, it's been the big plays all night for Gardner Edgerton. Those explosive plays. 39 yards, 42, 47, 46, 40, you know. Any play around that time, those are the explosive plays that are really going to hurt you, and they have hurt Mill Valley here tonight. And Gardner Edgerton's just done a great job with their athletes of getting the ball to them in some space, well-blocked uh, well blocked plays up front, and then letting their playmakers do the rest. Sangaroff on the tackle on uh, Martin. Third down and long for this Gardner Edgerton offense who came in averaging 47.3 points per game, has 48 on the board here in the fourth quarter. So, he, or yeah, I beg your pardon, 49. And everybody said it was their strength of schedule. They hadn't played uh, a very tough bunch of teams, but. Put 49 on the road here at Mill Valley. That's, think, uh, you're doing something. I think one thing that I've taken away from this is their defense is for real, right? They gave, they gave up only seven points in three weeks coming into this. I know Mill Valley struggled offensively. Their defense is for real. They got a ton of team speed. Great linebacker play, in my observation so far. And then offensively, they've got some weapons that they do a great job of getting the ball to. And now Powell, quick kick it down the field and get the nice field turf roll inside the 20-yard line. And now I think what people, yeah, you mentioned the linebackers, but that's secondary with the quarters, 45 yards on the punt, you know, that's secondary so strong. And then you had Randy Singleton, but the linebackers are good. And when you have a really strong a secondary is... They do as there's the star of the game tonight. Number one, Randy Singleton, Braven Powell, good game as uh, well. And, but uh, Randy Singleton, the Porter twins, they, they've been uh, very good. But they knew they had one of the best secondaries in 6A with all that coming back and just so much team speed as this running play is shut down. Getting some new faces on the field. 
Matthew Reimer, a senior in there. No gain on that last play, second down and 10. Running play, breaks free for a first down. That will be a run of by Jaden Scobie. He's got some time now. As the backup's getting time for both sides. Scobie giving a breather to Tristan Baker, and Scobie with a nice run. First down run to the 36 yard line for the Jaguars. You know, Kevin, here in week four, the outcome of this game for Mill Valley is not great, right? And for Gardner Edgerton, it's, it's fantastic for you. But these are valuable reps for these backup guys because you have injuries that come on over the course of the year. You can't replicate that in practice. And so these are, these are valuable plays right here down the stretch for both of these teams. Lane with the run, running into uh, Dawson Kindler. Second down and eight. Three and a half to play in regulation. And this is Scobie showing some nice power. Scobie dragging tacklers for a good run. So it's back to back good runs by Jaden Scobie. Great job of keeping the legs driving, breaking some tackles. Scobie also, you got Jaden and you got uh, Jenner. Jenner's the sophomore, Jaden the older of the two brothers. Third down and three. Scobie. Forward progress is past the chains, so a first down for Jaden Scobie. He was knocked back, but it is a Jaguar first down. Midfield, first and ten for the Jaguars. And Scobie, the star of this drive, just across midfield before he is uh, taken down by Marcos. Large man at uh, the nose guard spot. <laughs> Scobie again on a short run. The GE fans with the overrated chant to the Mill Valley homecoming crowd. The Mill Valley I don't home, think they're the going to drop The Mill Valley much. homecoming crowd is <laughs> yeah. in, in shock right yeah. now, or they should be, their rebuttal should be is your 6A. Yeah, your 6A, and we're probably not going to drop too much in the 5A poll <laughs> with his loss. So. But, I mean, hey. This is a statement game for Gardner Edgerton. It is. I mean, Mill Valley's handled them. I mean, Gardner Edgerton's come on the road. I mean, they did have one turnover. I thought they got a little sloppy once they got the big lead, but that's, you know, you get a little complacent when you have a big lead. Got some penalties, but I think overall, Jesse Owens is going to like this win. Proud of his guys, but. He'll be uh, putting that one on the back burner fast because he's got to take on his old team, Olathe North, next week in Gardner. And you know he wants to beat the Eagles after being a star there. And then, well, he, you know, he played at Pittsburgh State. He was a running back there for the Gorillas. Got a flag down on the play. This is the type of play that's not going to make after him happy play, right here either. Personal foul, defense. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down, Mill Valley. So a 15 yard penalty on the defense. 
As we're under a minute to play in regulation. Yeah, if they give up points here, I it's, know. It's about pride right now. I know. I, yeah, yes. I, I, it's about I feel pride like on both Coach sides, McCall exactly, and uh, Coach Owen will not be uh, happy uh, guys on the bus ride home. Let's put it that way. If, if you get a 15-yard penalty. And running play, Scobie, and there's a big stick there. Is coming up, Eli Porter. I'm telling you, those guys, the twins on the corner, if you're going to run to the edge, you better, <laughs> I'll tell you what, you get talk ready about for Phil, Cam and you Eli. You want to talk about filling a hole right there. He came shot, shot out of a rocket in to make that play. Well, this defense is getting sold short because of their strength of schedule. I don't think people are going to be selling it short. Now, Scobie gets to the outside and run out of bounds by uh, Linden. A, uh, first down run. Raven Powell. Big night. Four touchdown passes and a rushing touchdown. Ball at the 15 yard line. This might be the uh, final play barring penalty. Lane at quarterback. Scobie lining up, lining his shift to the right. Blaine will take off and run, and he is grabbed from behind. And that was easily, and that's your ball game. Gardner Edgerton, number one team in 6A on the road, gets a Sunflower Road win to go to 4 0 in conference play and overall, and beats a team that's beaten them the last couple of times. Pretty good. And Jesse Owens' team wins it by a final of 49 to 10 on the road here at Shawnee over number one ranked in 5A and four time defending state champ Mill Valley in a one sided affair. It's again 49 10 is your final. And next action for the Mill Valley squad at ODAC as they take on Olathe South at Olathe South. And Gardner Edgerton will host Olathe North. We'll have that ball game for you on Spectrum News next week. Myself, Johnny Beck, and Bethany Bowman. And uh, let's check in with Bethany on the field with a player interview. Quarterback Raven Powell joins us for the Trailblazers. Four passing touchdowns on the night, one rushing as well. You're all over the field tonight. And uh, Randy Singleton, your guy, what an athlete, what a playmaker. How glad are you that he's in a Gardner Edgerton jersey? He's my guy. We put him to work in all summer, staying after, coming early, whether it's an hour, two hours. We always make sure we get the extra work and it's showing all year long. It's going to keep showing and that's what we got, yeah. Mark and Kevin, you guys up in the booth said it. This is a statement win for Gardner Edgerton here over 5A Powerhouse Mill Valley. How good does this one feel, Raven? And what does this do for your program? It was great. I mean, Mill Valley, they're the greatest every year in 5A. So just shows a lot about us and all the work we did this summer. And it's on to the next, on to the next. One and no. How much does the one-point loss in the 6A state championship last year fuel this team? Oh, it's, it's the biggest thing that fuels us. Chip on our shoulder. We came up a yard short. I mean, all summer long, came to yard short. So that's our motto, finish through the line, go 110%, that's all. Well, no loss tonight, a big win for the Trailblazers. Congratulations, Braven. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, you gotta love that smile on Braven Powell. His team wins it 49-10 on the road at Mill Valley. Hy-Vee post game is coming up next.